the rarest of occult manuscripts, of the utmost significance to all students of Freemasonry and the occult sciences is this unique manuscript, La Tresa Inta Trinosophia. Not only is it the only known mystical writing of the Comte de Saint Germain, but it is one of the most extraordinary documents relating to the hermetic sciences ever compiled. Though the libraries of European Rosicrucians and Kabbalists contain many rare treasures of ancient philosophical lore, it is extremely doubtful if any of them include a treatise of greater value or significance. There is a persistent rumor that Saint Germain possessed a magnificent library and that he prepared a number of manuscripts on the secret sciences for the use of his disciples. At the time of his death or disappearance, these books and papers vanished, probably into the archives of his society, and no trustworthy information is now available as to their whereabouts. The mysterious Comte is known to have possessed at one time a copy of the Vatican manuscript of the Kabbalah, a work of extraordinary profundity setting forth the doctrines of the Luciferians, Lucianists, and the Gnostics. The second volume of the Secret Doctrine by H. P. Blavatsky, pages 582 to 583 of the original edition, contains two quotations from a manuscript supposed to be by the Comte de Saint Germain. The parts of the paragraphs attributed to the Hungarian adept are not clearly indicated, but as the entire text deals with the significance of numbers, it is reasonable to infer that his commentaries are mystical interpretations of the numerals 4 and 5. Both paragraphs are in substance similar to the Puissance de Nombres d'Apres Pythagore by Jean Marie Reagan. The Mahatma Kuthumi mentions a ciphered manuscript by Saint Germain, which remained with his staunch friend and patron, the benevolent Prince Charles of Hesse Cassel, see Mahatma Letters to AP Synod, comparatively unimportant references to Saint Germain and wild speculations concerning his origin and the purpose of his European activities are available in abundance, but the most exhaustive search of the work of 18th century memoir writers for information regarding the Masonic and metaphysical doctrines which he promulgated has proved fruitless. So far as it has been possible to ascertain, the present translation and publication of Letra Sainte Trinosophie affords the first opportunity to possess a work setting forth in the usual veiled and symbolic manner the esoteric doctrines of Saint Germain and his associates. La Tresainte Trinosophie is manuscript number 2400 in the French Library at Troyes. The work is of no great length, consisting of 96 leaves written upon one side only. The calligraphy is excellent, although somewhat irregular in spelling and accenting, the French is scholarly and dramatic, and the text is embellished with numerous figures, well drawn and brilliantly colored. In addition to the full-page drawings, there are symbols at the beginning and end of each of the sections. Throughout the French text there are scattered letters, words and phrases in several ancient languages. There are also magical symbols, figures resemb resembling Egyptian hieroglyphics and a few words and characters resembling cuneiform. At the end of the manuscript are a number of leaves written in arbitrary ciphers, possibly the code used by Saint Germain's secret society. The work was probably executed in the latter part of the 18th century though most of the material belongs to a considerably earlier period. As to the history of this remarkable manuscript, too little, unfortunately, is known. The illustrious Freemasonic martyr, the Comte Alessandro Cagliostro, carried this book, amongst others, with him on his ill-fated journey to Rome. After Cagliostro's incarceration in the castle San Leo, all trace of the manuscript was temporarily lost. Eventually, Cagliostro's literally effects came into the possession of a general in Napoleon's army, and upon this officer's death, Lettre Sainte Trinosophie was bought at a nominal price by the Bibliothèque de Troyes. In his Musée des Sources, Grilla de Givry adds somewhat to the meager notes concerning the manuscript. He states that the volume was bought 
at the sale of Messana's effects that in the front of the book is a note by a philosopher who signs himself IBC Philotum, who states that the manuscript belonged to him and is the sole existing copy of the famous Trinosophie of the Comte de Saint Germain, the original of which the Comte himself destroyed on one of his journeys. The note then adds that Cagliostro had owned the volume but that the Inquisition has seized it in Rome when he was arrested at the end of 1789. As I told you before, um, and this information um, I got from um, Helena Pedrovna Blavatsky is that um, these people who, um, the Catholic priests and in general uh, Vatican that uh, caused many burnings burned witches and magicians because they wanted to receive the information they wanted their precious manuscripts it's not because um those people were evil or anything like this but they held um information that can liberate one information that can make one powerful and vatican wanted to remain the only powerful body in the world so it killed those that it feared and it's not because of Christianity or trying to get rid of witches, it's, it's nothing like this. It's just a pretext that they used to steal the precious magic manuscripts so that it itself becomes powerful and it disempowers the rest of humanity, that there is no secret knowledge to be passed from generation to generation. They wanted to destroy those who held that secret knowledge so that only Vatican has that knowledge and becomes the, po the most powerful body in the world, hypnotized holding under magic all the populations and now it holds under that magic sway uh, millions of people continuing the um, introduction it should be remembered that Cagliostro and his wife had visited Saint Germain at a castle in Holstein the Givri sums up the contents of Lettre Saint Trinosophie as Kabbalized alchemy and describes Saint Germain as one of the enigmatic personages of the 18th century. An alchemist and man of the world who passed through the drawing rooms of all Europe and ended up falling into the dungeons of the Inquisition at Rome if the manuscript is to be believed. So, um, Basically, in the manuscript, in the first section, it's told that Saint Germain was caught by Rome to be killed, but that um, he was promised liberation by um, the spirits. Um, so that he did not end up dying in the dungeon of Rome, but actually he disappeared from the dungeon but that this manuscript was written at that time when he was captured but even that story of captivity of his is highly symbolical so that's what we find in occult um, symbolic stories it can actually tell a real story but there's so much more to that one should read with spiritual eyes open and i believe the same is the case with the story of jesus it might be true that he was crucified but there's so much more to that story <clears throat> continuing the introduction the title of the manuscript, La Tres Saint Trinosophia, translated into English, means the Most Holy Trinosophia, or the Most Holy Threefold Wisdom. The title itself opens a considerable field of speculation. Is there any connection between La Tres Saint Trinosophia and the Masonic Brotherhood of Les Trinosophists, which was founded in 1805 by the distinguished Belgian Freemason and mystic Jean-Marie Ragon, already referred to? And again, I need to um, include here some things um, so that people would not stop uh, listening from here, hearing that it's about Freemasons, that um, the Comte Saint Germain was connected with Freemasons. For example, H.P. Blavatsky claimed that firstly, um, the institution of Freemasons was all about goodness and truth, but it was infl infiltrated by Catholics and Jesuits, and now it became a, an institution run by Jesuits that it has not um, 
retained much of what it was about that it became uh, very Catholic and run by Jesuits so it wasn't like this in the past and so um, maybe indeed Freemasons in the past weren't as bad as they are now uh, infiltrated by Jesuits continuing the section uh, the introductory section. The knowledge of occultism possessed by Reagan is mentioned in terms of the highest respect by H.P. Blavatsky, who says of him that for 50 years he studied the ancient mysteries wherever he could find accounts of them. Is it not possible that Reagan, as a young man, either knew St. Germain or contacted his secret society? Reagan was turned by his contemporaries the most learned Mason of the 19th century. In 1818, before the Lodge of Tre Les Trinosophists, he delivered a course of lectures on ancient and modern initiation, which he repeated at the request of that Lodge in 1841. These lectures were published under the title Course Philosophique et Interpretatif des Initiations Anciennes et Modernes. In 1853, Reagan published his most important work, Orthodoxy Maconique. Reagan died in Paris about 1866, and two years later, his unfinished manuscripts were purchased from his ears by the Grand Orient of France for 1,000 francs. A high mason told Madame Blavatsky that Reagan had corresponded for years with two Orientalists in Syria and Egypt, one of whom was a cop gentleman. Reagan defined the lodge of the Trinosophists as those who study three sciences. Madame Blavatsky writes, it is on the occult properties of the three equal lines or sides of the triangle that Reagan based his studies and founded the famous Masonic Society of the Trinosophists. Reagan describes the symbolism of the triangle in substance as follows. The first side or line represents the mineral kingdom, which is the proper study of apprentices. The second line represents the vegetable kingdom, which the companions should learn to understand because in this kingdom, generation of bodies begins. The third line represents the animal kingdom, from the exploration of which the master mason must complete his education. It has been said of the lodge of the Trinosophists that it was at one time the most intelligent society of Freemasons ever known. It adhered to the ancient landmarks, but gave clearer and more satisfactory interpretations to the symbols of Freemasonry than are afforded in the symbolical lodges. It practiced five degrees. In the third, candidates for initiation received a philosophic and astronomic explanation of the Hieramic legend. The Egyptianized interpretation of Freemasonic symbolism, which is so evident in the writings of Reagan and other French Masonic scholars of the same period, such as Corda Gabelin and Alexandre Lanar, is also present in the figures and text of Saint Germain manuscript. In his comments on the rite of Misraim, called the Egyptian rite, Reagan distinguishes 90 degrees of Masonic mysteries. The first to 33rd degrees he terms symbolic, the third 34th to 66th degrees philosophic, the 67th to 77th mystic, and the 78th to 19th Kabbalistic. The Egyptian Freemasonry of Cagliostro may also have been derived from Saint Germain or from some common body of Illuminists of whom Saint Germain was the moving spirit. Cagliostro's memoirs contain a direct statement of his initiation into the Order of Knights Templars at the hands of Saint Germain. The Luchette gives what a modern writer on Cagliostro calls a fantastic account of the visit paid by Alessandro and his wife, the Comtes Felicitas, to Saint Germain in Germany, and their subsequent initiation by him into the sect of the Rosicrucians, of which he was the Grand Master or Chief. There is nothing improbable in the assumption that Cagliostro secured Lestra Saint Trinosophy from Saint Germain and that the manuscript is in every respect an authentic ritual of this society. Society. The world Trinosophy quite properly infers a triple meaning to the contents of the book, in other words, that its meaning should be interpreted with the aid of three keys. From the symbolism it seems that one of these keys is alchemy or soul chemistry, another is Sinian Kabbalism, and the third Alexandrian Hermetism, the mysticism of the later Egyptians. 
From such fragments of the Rosicrucian lore as now exists, it is evident that the brethren of the Rose Cross were especially addicted to these three forms of ancient wisdom and chose the symbols of these schools as the vehicles of their ideas. The technical task of decoding the hieroglyphics occurring throughout Lettre Saint Trinosophy was assigned to Dr. Edward C. Chetzinger, an eminent authority on ancient alphabets and languages, who is now engaged in the decoding of the primitive ciphers in the Book of Genesis. A few words from his notes will give an idea of the difficulties involved in decoding. It's talking about the pictures that accompanies each symbolic story. Archaic writings are usually in one system of letters or characters, but those among the ancients who were in possession of the secret mysteries of life and certain secret astronomical cycles never trusted this knowledge to ordinary writing, but devised secret codes by which they concealed their wisdom from the unworthy. Each of these communities or brotherhoods of the enlightened devised its own code. About 3000 BC only the initiates and the scribes and their scribes could read and write. At that period, the simpler methods of concealment were in vogue, one of which was to drop certain letters from words in such a manner that the remaining letters still formed a word, which, however, conveyed an entirely different sense. As ages progressed, other systems were invented until human ingenuity was taxed to the utmost in an endeavor to conceal and yet perpetuate secret knowledge. In order to decipher ancient writings of a, of a religious or philosophical nature, it is necessary to discover the code or method of concealment used by the scribe. In all my 20 years of experience as a reader of archaic writings, I have never encountered such ingenious codes and methods of concealment as are found in this manuscript. It on, in only a few instances are complete phrases written in the same alphabet. Usually two or three forms of writing are employed with letters written upside down, reversed, or with the text written backwards. Vowels are often omitted and at times several letters are missing with merely dots to indicate their number. Every combination of hieroglyphics seemed hopeless at the beginning, yet after hours of alphabetic dissection one familiar word would appear. This gave a clue as to the language used and established a place where word combinations might begin and then a sentence would gradually unfold. The various texts are written in Chaldean Hebrew, Ionic Greek, Arabic, Syriac, Cuneiform, Greek hieroglyphics, and ideographs. The keynote throughout this material is that of the approach of the age when the leg of the Grand Man and the Waterman of the Zodiac shall meet in conjunction at the equinox and end a grand 400,000 year cycle. This points to a culmination of eons as mentioned in the Apocalypse, Behold, I make a new heaven and a new earth meaning a series of new cycles and a new humanity. The personage who gathered the material in this manuscript was indeed one whose spiritual understanding might be envied. He found these various texts in different parts of Europe, no doubt, and that he had a true knowledge of their import is proved by the fact that he attempted to conceal some 40 fragmentary ancient texts by scattering them within the lines of his own writing. Yet his own text does not appear to have any connection with these ancient writings. If a decipherer were to be guided by what this eminent scholar wrote, he would never decipher the mystery concealed within the cryptic work. Words. There is a marvelous spiritual story written by the savant, and a more wonderful one he interwove within the pattern of his own narrative. The result is a story within a story. In the reprinting of the French text of Trinosophia, the spelling and, and punctuation is according to the original. It has been impossible, however, to reproduce certain peculiarities of the calligraphy. In some cases, the punctuation is obscure, accents are omitted, and dashes of varying lengths are inserted to fill out lines. The present manuscript is undoubtedly a copy, as Philotom stated. The archaic characters and the hieroglyphics reveal minor imperfections of formation due to the copies being unfamiliar with the alphabets employed. The considerable extent of the notes and commentaries has made it advisable to place them together at the end 
of the work rather than break up the continuity of the text by over frequent interpolations. Um, so in this video series, I'm going to um, place those interpretations of the text right next to the text itself so that one would follow the story better. La Tresse Sophie is not a manuscript for the Tyro. Only deep study and consideration will unravel the complicated skein of its symbolism. Although the text matter is treated with the utmost simplicity, every line is a profound enigma. Careful perusal of the book and meditation upon its contents will convince the scholar that it has been well designated the most precious known manuscript of occultism. So this ends the introduction to this um, esoteric book and in the next um, video I'm going to um, read out the first section of the book including its uh, symbolic picture and the explanation of the symbols. Thank you for watching. Take care.